is the link on the chat for the register. Just give me a second. Okay. The link is in the chat. Please make sure that you complete the register and then we can start with today's session. <clears throat> Today we're going to be discussing measuring the relationship between two numerical variables, uh, which is the correlation and the regression. We're going to do both of them today. Welcome to your session seven. I think this part we already covered, uh, but unless if there is a question relating to content, if you have any question or comment. If, if none, then we can start with the session. So in terms of the session, we're going to look at the regression, but more specifically in terms of the correlation studies. The requirements for doing this, you need um, not so much of statistical tables, uh, but if you are required to use the statistical table to do a regression test, you need that. You need the formulas and you need your calculator. By the end of the session, you should be able to build a regression model. You should be able to estimate the coefficient of regressions. Um, and more specifically, you should be able to calculate your slope and your intercepts and be able to calculate the correlation and also interpret the correlation. To start off with, uh, because here we're talking about the relationship between two numerical variable and that is one of the measures of relationship that we're talking about here so this you should have learned it in 1501 um, and in 1502 you just need to know how to calculate it not more about how to interpret it but because uh, some students are doing 1501 and 1502 at the same time, and I know with 1501 you wouldn't have by now have read through the correlation and coefficient because they are the last chapters of your study unit. So I'm going to brush off, like start off with the introduction of the concepts at the high level, but we're going to go through them as quickly as possible. And then we're going to get into how we do the calculations as well. So in terms of um, the relationship, we can do that uh, by visualizing the two numerical values in terms of a scatter plot so that we can look at their relationship as well. So a scatter plot can be used to show the relationship between two numerical variables and the correlation analysis is a measure of the strength of that relationship or that association. So the scatter plot shows you visually how the relationship looks. The correlation coefficient gives you a numerical value that tells you the strength of that relationship. Okay. But also the value that you will get, not only just the strength, but it will also give you the direction of that relationship as well. So correlation is only concerned with the strength of the relationship and there is no causal effect which is implied when we look at correlation as well. So there are different types of relationships. So they can be linear relationship 
whether when the values of X increases, the values of Y increases, or when the values of X decreases, the values of Y uh, increases, it's things like that. And those we call them the linear relationship because it can be a positive relationship or a negative relationship. They can also be caviar relationship. So this are what we call um, uh, the quadratic relationships or also the exponential relationship as well. And during COVID, we used to see more graphs being displayed in terms of the exponential relationship. Also, there can be no relationship in terms of the two measures that you are looking at when data is just or the data is just scattered around everywhere haphazardly, or it might have same constant uh, spread where the other value stays the same, maybe it stays flat, it's just around three and four, three and four, even when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y stays constant. Sometimes it can be that the value of Y stay constant, oh, sorry, the value of X stays constant, but the value of Y increases. So if only the value of X being at that point stays constant at that point, but the values of Y will be increasing all the time. And that there is no relationship because there is no relationship between your X and your Y values. In terms of the calculation of correlation of coefficient, because at the bomb previously we looked at the scatter plot where these dots represent the points in terms of the values of X and Y, and we can calculate the uh, correlation coefficient, which will tell us the strength of that relationship. And we use this formula. Later on, we're gonna look at some examples on how we apply this formula. Uh, you need to know that this formula is to calculate your coefficient of correlation, which is R, it is n times the sum of your x and y, because we're looking at x and y observations here, minus the sum of x times the sum of y, divided by the square root of your n times the summation of x squared, minus the sum x squared. Those two are different. This one is sum of x squared. So if I have the values of x, 1, 2, and 3, this says I must add is the sum of x, which will give me 6. And this, sorry, this one is the sum of x and the sum of x squared, which is that one. It will be 1 times 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 3 squared, which will give me the sum of x squared, which will be 9 plus 4, which will be 13 plus 1, which will be 14. So those two are different and you need to treat them different like that. N multiply by N times the summation of Y squared minus the summation of Y squared. And you can see that also you do the same with the Y. Uh, later on, we will get into more details in terms of in terms of how we calculate the coefficient of correlation. The value of R is always going to be between the values of uh, negative one and one, uh, or it can be in a percentage, in a decimal format. So it's just between negative one and one. So it can be 0 0.99, 0 0.98, minus 0 0.99, minus 0 0.98, minus 0 0.75, and so forth. If the value of R is bigger than zero, then we say the correlation coefficient is positive. Then it means the relationship is positive, which means when the value of X increases, the value of Y also increases. When your coefficient of correlation is less than zero, then it means the relationship is a negative one which will mean that 
when the values of x are increasing, the values of y are decreasing. So this relationship will look like, like that. When the values of y are increasing that way, you can see that the values of y, when the values of x are increasing this way, because if I look at this point and this point, you can see that the value of y of x here, it's big and the value of x on this point is small and the value of y is small at that point and the value of y is big at that point. So when the values of x are increasing, the values of y are decreasing. The first one, when they are increasing, the relationship looks like this. It means when the values of x are increasing, the values of y are also increasing as well. But also we said they can also be no relationship. And that is when the values of r is equals to zero, then there is no correlation, there is no relationship between x and y. However, because there are many other values in between the zeros and negative one and one, then we need to be able to also classify the type of that relationship in terms of the strength of that relationship. And that is why coefficient of correlation measures the strength and the direction. So here we talk about the direction. If it's greater than zero, the direction says it's positive. If it talks about less than zero, the direction says it's a negative. In terms of the strength, then we look at the actual value that we get of the coefficient of correlation. If your coefficient of correlation is minus one, we say it is a perfect negative relationship. If it's between and some books, they use different measures. So you must also check if in your module, they did define these relationships. So here it says, if the relationship is between minus one and uh, your coefficient of correlation R is between minus one and 0 0.979, then it is a strong relationship. And if it is between negative 0 0.9 and 0 0.39, we say it is a moderate relationship. And if it's between 0 0.39 and 0, we say it is a weak relationship. And we know that when it's 0, there is no relationship. And also it will happen with their positive relationship. Between 0 0.9, 0 0.79 and 0 0.39, it will be moderate. And as it goes higher, 0 0.79 and 1, it will be strong positive relationship. And when R is 1, we say it is a perfect positive relationship. So in terms of how you will find the questions or how you interpret the questions as you see them, Let's look at some of the scatter plots and the coefficient of correlation when it is calculated. So let's say this is the relationship. You can see that the R is equals to one. Therefore, this is a perfect positive relationship because if you look at the points, they are right on a straight line and it shows you when the value of X increases the values of y also are increasing so it's a positive relationship and it is a perfect because your r is equals to one next one it's got points scattered all over your r is 0 0.18 when we calculated r and this we can say uh, it is a weak positive relationship because i can see when these values are going up the values of y are also going up, even though they are scattered everywhere. The strength of this relationship is very weak, but it is a still a strong positive. Uh, it is still a positive relationship. Looking at this one, where it's got an R of 0.85, we say it's got a strong positive relationship. 
and the last one, when we look at it, it's minus 0 0.92. It is a strong negative relationship, as we can see that when the values of X are increasing, the values of Y are decreasing. The closer R comes to one, the more X and Y are related. And you can see from the graphs that we have as well. When we have a coefficient of correlation, which is R, we can calculate what we call a coefficient of determination. Now, coefficient of determination tells us what is the portion of that total variation in the dependent variable which is our y variable that is explained by the variation in our independent variable x. So coefficient of determination tells us what is that total variation in the values of your y dependent variable that is explained by the variation in the independent variable. And we're going to look at how we interpret this coefficient of determination because for example if my coefficient of correlation is 0 0.92 if r is 0 0.92 to calculate r squared my r squared is just to put 0 0.92 squared and that should give me a, an answer of <clears throat> 0.92 squared it's 0, 0.885 so what it means it says 0.85% of the total variation in my y independent variables are explained by the variation in the x variable and that's how you interpret this instead of writing or putting the prop the portion there you can say 0 0.85 of the total variation in the dependent variable is explained by the variation in the independent variable and that's how you interpret your r squared which is just the square of your coefficient of determination you can also calculate r squared by using the formula r r squared is equals to the regression sum square measures divided by the total sum square which is your ssr divided by your sst and later on we're going to expand more on that in terms of the coefficient of determination you also need to remember and know that it is always between the values of 0 and 1. It will not be negative because we are squaring the values. So it will be between 0 and 1. So in terms of the relationship, so let's say, for example, we were finding the relationship and here is the uh, relationship between X and Y and you would have noticed that sometimes I like to draw the line like that. So you can also fit a regression line on top of your scatter plot in order to check how related are your X and Y. What is the influence of X on your Y and you can use that regression line to predict what the new number can be if it's not there or what the number could be if we predicting a number that is on the here you can find any of the values on your scatter plot by just substituting the value of x so that you can find or find the estimated value of y and that's where regression line comes in so we're going to use this line the regression line to estimate the value of our dependent variable and how do we do that by using 
by using regression line. And I just said it, we use the regression analysis to predict the value of your dependent variable based on the value of at least one of the independent variable. Now, in your module, you're not doing a multivariate uh, analysis. We're doing only one, so there will only be one independent variable. There will not be more than one, so you will always work with one independent variable, which is your X. And the regression uh, analysis will help explain the impact of changes in the independent variable on the dependent variable. And in school, we used to use the formula y is equals to mx plus c. Now we're going to use, especially in your module, you're using your textbook is Keller, uh, and I think it's called the economics of statistics or something like that. Um, we use the formula y is equals to b1 times x, which is the slope, times x plus b0, which is our intercept. So that is the formula that we're going to be using, the second formula. y is equals to b1x plus b0, and some errors, but we're not going to worry about the errors. Uh, we're just going to use b0 plus b1x to explain your regression line. Your dependent variable y will be the variable that we wish to explain or predict, and your independent variable that will be the variable that we use to predict or explain our dependent variable. So this is our dependent variable. This, sorry, independent variable. This is our dependent variable. So let's look at how we do this regression line. So a regression line, which is given by this equation, y estimate is equals to your slope or your intercept, b0 plus b1, which is your slope, times your x. Your slope, we can interpret it. Your intercept, it is where x is equals to 0. If x is equals to 0, then your y estimate will be the same as your intercept. And this will give us the relationship between X and Y because it will be described by this linear function that we're going to be using. And it, the slope will tell us what will be the changes in the values of Y as assumed to be related to the changes in the values of our X that will be from calculating the slope as well. And B0 will be the estimated average value of y, which will be the estimated value of y if our x is equals to zero, because if x is equals to zero, zero times b1 will be equals to zero. Therefore, it means those two values will be the same. <clears throat> and our b1, which we can also interpret when we have the value of B1, we can interpret it as the estimated change in the average value of Y as a result of one unit change or one unit increase or decrease in the value of X. So we can interpret B1, we can interpret the coefficient of correlation, we can interpret the coefficient of determination. So this equation, you can calculate it and do it on your Excel sheet. There is a regression model on your, uh, under the data analysis panel. <clears throat> and you can use that. So let's look at an example. A firm personnel department hired employees for a given job, primarily on the basis of the result of an aptitude test administered to job applicants. The performance of those hired was rated on the same scale by their supervisor a year after they were hired. A sample of the test grades and the supervisor's assigned grades is as follows. So they, we have the test grades and the supervisor's grades. So our dependent variable X is our test grade and our our, sorry, our independent variable, X is always independent. Our independent variable X and our 
dependent variable y. So we can plot this onto our scatter plot. So where a value of x is 1, the value of y is 4, and that will be the point. When the value of x is 3, the value of y is 6, and that will be the point, because that will be the point. When the value of x is 5, over here, and the value of y is 10, and 10, that will be that value there. When the value of x is 5, and the value of y is 12. So y and 12, that will be the point there. When the value of x is 1, and the value of y is 13, and that is the point there. By looking at this graph, we can deduce, we can have so many other information relating to this. This is an outlier because it's the value far away from the rest of the other value, or what we call an extreme uh, as extreme outlier or value. Looking at this, when the value of x are increasing, the value of y is also increasing based on this information that we have. And we can see that this is a positive relationship. We don't know what is the strength, but all what we know is this is a positive relationship. Based on this information, then we can do our regression line. We can plot our regression line, and that is the line that we have here. And we can also describe what this line is by calculating the values of that line. So now I'm going to show you an Excel output of the same data that we have, the very same your text, uh, test and supervisor grade, your X and Y values. I plug them in into Excel and I can show you later on if we have time. Plugged it in into Excel and ran the regression line. And this is the output that I got. From this uh, Excel output, there are several things that you can take out. Already calculated your multiple R is just your R. Your R squared is your coefficient of correlation. The others you can ignore. The other thing that you need to be aware of is these two. Your intercept, which is B0, and your test grade, which will be your B1. Now, with the B1, we can also include X as our test grade. So, we can do this instead of writing x, we can put this value as b1 and into bracket test grade. And those are the values that we can use. So the first one, we know that is the coefficient of correlation, coefficient of determination, and we can write out our regression line. Remember our regression line is y hat is equals to b0, plus B1, X. Always remember that your slope is multiplying with the X, and our X is just the test grade, and that is our regression line. As you can see, I have covered everything that you needed to know in two minutes, but sometimes it's not as easy and straightforward as this because you, are, you need to do some calculations. Okay, let's go into that. Let's say we need to use the same information that we have, the test grades and the supervisor's grade. Let's determine the least square regression line manually without using Excel and find the coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination manually, meaning using the formulas. So we have the table. As you can see, there are my values from 1 up until 1 and 13 from uh, y4 until 13. I can calculate the total. The total is like summation. So this will be the sum. So this will represent the sum of x and this will represent the sum of x and uh, the sum of y. So the totals will represent the sum of y's. And I can calculate the mean because the mean, we know what the mean is. The mean is the sum of x divided by n 
they are. So you add all of them. There are 15 divided by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. 15 divided by 5 will give us 3. The same here, the mean will be the sum of y divided by how many they are. And that will give us the mean of y, which is the sum of all of them, which are there 45. Divide by 5, which gives us 9. So I've got the mean, the sum totals. I can also calculate the sum of x times y, which it says 1 times 1, uh, 1 times 4 is 4, 3 times 6 is 18, and so forth. And I can add all of them, and that will be the sum of x, y, x times y. I can also do the same with the sum of uh, with x squared. So I'm just going to come here and say 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, 5 squared is 25, and so on. And I sum all of them, and that will give us the sum of x squared. And the same will be for the sum of y squared. So I know from the regression line, you remember the regression formula? R is equals to N times the sum of X and Y minus the sum of X divided by N or something like that. Do you still remember? Divide by the square root of your sum of N times the sum squared sum. That whole formula, we'll get to that. I'm not going to write it because I didn't memorize it to that extent. So how do we then find the regression line? Know that this is the regression line, but it means we need to know the formulas. So the formulas are there given to you. So we know this is the regression line. We need the value of our uh, intercept, the value of our slope B1. We don't have to substitute the value of X and Y. So the red, those two, we don't have to substitute them. We need to calculate those two, B1 and B0. First of all, we can calculate B0. B0, which is the intercept, is calculated by the mean, not the mean estimate, the mean bar, x, y bar, of y minus this slope times the mean of x. So it means we need to calculate the mean of y, the mean of x bar, and the slope so how do we calculate the slope calculating the slope we use this formula the sum of x y minus the sum of x times the sum of y divide by n divide everything by the sum of x squared minus the sum of x squared uh, divide by n the mean we know that is the sum of y divided by n and the same with the mean of x will be the sum of x divided by n. We also know that we had this table already calculated with all our values. You can, for now, ignore these two columns. We'll get to them later on. Uh, <clears throat> so we know from our previous exercise, we had all these two, these three columns. So those are the ones that we can use. Um, so let's start substituting into this. So the first one we, we need to start with is, let's start with the B1, the slope, because we cannot calculate B0. We need to calculate the slope. So let's substitute the values. The sum of XY, remember we calculated that, it's 145. The sum of X is 15. The sum of Y is 45. The sum squared is 61. The sum of x is 15 squared divided by n everywhere where n is. So n is how many there are. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There are 5. And then you calculate and you find your B0. Oh, sorry, B1 as 0 0.625. Now we can calculate the mean or we can just substitute because we calculated the mean previously. So calculating the mean, we get 9 and 3. And we can then substitute into our intercept. <laughs> into our intercept, the mean of y is, Z, is 9 minus b1 is 0 0.625. The mean of x is 3 
and the answer we get is 7.125. Now we have the intercept and the slope. We can then substitute into the regression line. Substituting into the regression line, B0 is 7.125. B1 is 0 0.625. As you can see, I'm going to go quick, 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 quick back to one slide. 7.125 plus 0 0.625 from Excel is the same as the same as calculating from formulas manually. You can still get the same answer. It's just that one is the shortcut of the other. <clears throat> now let's calculate because the question, this is to answer A. A said we need to answer this. So this was option number one, to find the regression, the least square regression line. B said calculate the coefficient of correlation and the coefficient of determination. Calculating the coefficient of correlation, we use the formula. You still remember the formula? I'm going to bring back our data. Remember this, you can just ignore. We also have n times the sum of x and y minus the sum of x times the sum of y divided by the square root of the values underneath the square root. So we can just substitute into this formula as well. So we substitute, n is five, the sum of x and y is 145, the sum of x is 15, the sum of y is 45, divided by the square root of n is five. The sum of x squared is 61, minus the sum of x, the sum of x is 15, squared times 5 minus the sum of x uh, y squared, which is 465, minus the sum of 45 squared, and solve the equation, we get the answer of 0, 0.32227. And if we round it off to two decimal, we get the answer of 0, 0.32. And from here, you can calculate the coefficient of determination. Before we go there, let's calculate coefficient of determination, which is R squared, which will be 0, 0,32. Let's take all of them, all four digits squared. And that will give us your coefficient of determination of Point three two two seven squared is zero comma one zero. If I leave it like that, interpreting this, I can say that this is a positive. Oh, sorry, we can start with this strength, a weak positive. Relationship based on that. And we can also interpret this 0 0.10 variation in Y is explained by variation in X. Or we can even include total. Okay. 0 0.1 total variation in Y is explained by the variation in X. Or you can even say 10% of the total variation in Y is explained by the variation in X. And that one you can just say if there is a weak positive relationship between X and Y. And how do we interpret the regression line? Remember the regression line was the supervisor's estimated value that we can estimate any time will be given by 7.125 plus 0 0.625 and your test rate. And how we get that? 
this is very important as well. So if you calculate your coefficient of correlation and you get it as negative, therefore the slope sign as well will be negative as well. So in terms of this, we can say because there is an increase, a plus, so we're going to put there plus, is an increase and a negative is a is a decrease. So in terms of interpreting the slope, we're going to say because we know that the slope is 0 0.625, tells us that the mean of the supervisor grades will increase by 0 0.625 on average for each additional one unit increase in the values of your test grades. And there it is. And if it was negative, we would have said the supervisor grade will decrease by 0 0.625. Um, we don't have to interpret what the value of 7.125 is, but you can say the value of your um, intercept of 7.125 will be the same as your supervisor, will be the estimated supervisor uh, test grade if the test grade is equals to zero. So if this will be equals to zero, therefore the supervisor grade will just be on average 7.125. And that's how you interpret the regression line. And the coefficient of the regression lines. So we spoke about the sum square measures. Sometimes you might be given the sum square measures and be asked to calculate the sum square measures. So you just need to know how to use the sum square measures to calculate. Remember when we were doing the regression uh, calculations and I said, ignore that. Those are the things that you can use. Uh, so if I go back here to this ta uh, table of hours, with the sum square measure, so this will be x minus the mean, so it means 1 minus 3 will give us minus 2. Uh, 3 minus 3 is 0. 5 minus 3 is 2. And the same will apply with the y. And you can use that to answer any of the sum square measures. So with regression, you might be expected to use the sum square measures to answer some of the questions or you might be expected to just be given the, the data on the table and then you can use it. So now I've gone through using Excel, I've gone through using the manual calculations and later on we can go through how do we use a calculator. So you can calculate your coefficient of correlation, you can calculate the slope, uh, by using this and more especially you can also calculate the covariance let's write it here co covariance you can calculate the covariance using the sum square measures as well and that is the sum square measures you can also be asked to interpret what SS, uh, the total sum square measures mean, which means is your total variation, which is the measure of variation in the values of y value around their mean, and your SSR, which is your sum square measures of regression, which is the variation attributable to the relationship between x and y, which we can also refer to it as the explained variation. And then we have the SSE, which is the error sum square measure, which is the unexplained variation. And that is the variation in Y attributed by the factors other than the X, which are those unexplained factors that you don't know which ones are those. 
And in terms of the formula, your SST, which is your total variation, is the same as. It's made up of two parts, your SSR plus your SSE. So if they give you SSR and SST and they ask you to calculate SSE, you know that SST will be, uh, sorry, SSE will be SST minus SSR. All right, and we know that the coefficient of determination is SSR over SST. Right. You are also expected to know some concepts in terms of the diagnostic tests of the regression. So these are the things that are in your prescribed book or in your study guide. You just need to know that, that in terms of looking at the regression, sometimes you do get some of these measures. So sometimes you can test for normality. It means you will have a bell-shaped curve and you can draw a histogram on top of the residuals that you get. You can test for heteroscedacity, which is the variance in terms of uh, the, var uh, the variance which will not be constant, so it will have a varying uh, variances, and you can use this by looking at when you plot the residuals. But in your in your module, you are not expected to plot the residuals and interpret, but you just need to know the type of test that you need to do in order to look at a different diagnostic tests. Like, for example, testing for the outliers, you like I did uh, by putting it on a scatter plot. You are able to identify those extreme values from the uh, the scatter plot diagram. Also, the most influential observation will also look like outliers. Those will be those values that are away from everything that also influences in terms of the measures that you get. Like for example, your measure of correlation. Uh, or measures of determination. Okay, so any question before uh, we have 30 minutes? I'm not sure if we, I will be able to demonstrate this because I do have another uh, example that I also want to share with you, which I've already shared on the on the uh, graph or uh, what do you call on the notes uh, folder with you. So in terms of the calculator, you can use the Casio calculator, you can use a sharp calculator to calculate the regression. So if you have the data, this is my data, and I have a Casio calculator, there I need to put my calculator to state mode. And that is the first step that you need to do. So you press the mode button, which is the button written mode on top. So it's the mode. You press that. And you will have a view that looks like this, that will have your stat and your table. And you press two for stat, you will press that button two. And you will choose number two for X, uh, A plus B, X. Now you need to be very careful here. Remember our regression line is Y is equals to B zero plus B one X. Always remember that the slope is the value that is multiplying with an x. So if you look at this, you have a plus b x. So it means this is our slope. If any question is asked, this is our slope and this is our intercept. So you just need to be very careful about that because now on your calculator it's a plus b, not b0 and b1. So once you press two, your calculator will show state one or it will come up with a table. It means now you are ready to capture your data. So the table will have your X and Y uh, values at the top. In order for us to put in the value of X, we press four because those are the values of X. We're going to press four equal. So you just say four equal. And you go to the next one, two equal, six equal, five, four equal, three equal, and you would have had all the values of X. To capture the value of Y, you use your arrow to navigate. 
you go to the left so that you go to the x values and then you go to the top so that you go back to the beginning of the table until you get to where it corresponds with four and then you start capturing your y values and you say five equal three equal seven equal six equal five equal until you've captured all of them and then you go next you, when you are done there sorry there is a step missing so once you you capture all your data by pressing three equal you've you have your table with your x and y so they should correspond four should correspond with five two should correspond with three six should correspond with seven four should correspond with six and three should correspond with five and once you are done you press ac you just press the ac button and it will remove the table from your screen but the data is stored at the back of in the memory of your calculator now you can uh, get the same table by pressing shift there is a shift button and you press the step uh, one. There is a step written in orange on button number one. When you press that, you will get this menu, which will read one, two, three, four. Number one gives you the types of data. Number two gives you the table that we've catch, captured, which will be the same table. Number three will give you all the sum x, sum of x, y, sum of y, and so and so on and so on. Number four will give you the mean of X, the mean of Y, and the standard deviation of X, the standard deviation of Y, in terms of the population S, X, X, Y. It will give you all those values under the VAR. But that is not what we are looking for. We are calculating the regression line and that will be on button number five. Then you will press button number five. When you press five, you will get this menu, which, which will look like this. And A is your intercept. B is your slope. R is your coefficient of correlation. Um, X hat is your estimate. We haven't spoken about the estimate. Y hat is your estimate as well. So if you need to calculate any of those, you press shift first and then, or not shift, you will press the buttons that, so you will press shift five and it opens this menu and then you press A if you want to calculate the value of your slope. And then you go shift one, five, and you will get to two and you do that and you do that. And that will give you the value of B and you press equal sign and you will have your regression line. I'm not going to go into too much details in terms of that. On your sharp calculator, the same steps also happens. You need to put your calculator to state mode by pressing the mode function. So the mode button will be somewhere there next to the clear. It will say mode and you will press whatever the value it shows. It will show you um, SD, um, REG or LIN. It might show you REG or LIN. I'm, I'm not sure about what your sharp calculator shows you. Um, so you will press the mode, you press button number one for state mode because in the beginning it will give you STA um, and comp and all that. So you will you will have. So once you press the mode, you will have the function SD. Uh, I think it's comp SD and. No, 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 no. It's comp and state. So you press that. And once you press that for one, then you will have to press, there will be SD, there will be REC, and I think the other ones, uh, other functions. You just need to press the one that says REC for regression line, or it will say line, something like that. It might say REC or it might say line. And on your calculator on the screen, it will write this, that 
one. It will write step one in black, and you know that your calculator is in step mode. And you are ready to capture the data. To capture the data, on whether you're using a financial calculator or a casual calculator, so we say four, and there is an, an X and Y button that looks like that. Uh, no, it's a store. It's, I'm talking about the financial one now. It's STO. So that button there, it's called store. And this button is M plus. So we're going to press 4, STO, 5, M plus. And we go 2, STO, 3, M plus. 6, STO, 7, M plus. Until we've captured all of them. And every time you capture the data, it will say data set 1, data set 2, data set 3 and all the data will be captured onto your calculator. And in order for us to calculate the stats functions, all your values are written in green. In, uh, I'm not sure if it's called green or blue button, uh, which is the alpha button. So you will use the alpha button and the values are A and B. They will be on your open bracket and close bracket. And also on the multiplication and the division, there will also be some values, I think like your R and your Y estimate. They will be on the division and multiplication. And you use those values to calculate your, uh, if we have time, I will show you on the calculate, the actual calculate. The same method will happen with your sharp calculator on the sharp, Instead of STO, on the financial calculator, you will have the X and Y and the E and T. So when the sharp calculators in the previous slide, when we were pressing STO and M+, plus, you are going to press X and Y and E and T in the place of those ones. So you will say for uh, X and Y button, five ENT and it will say data set one and you continue and also the same your A and B your A and B buttons will be on the multiplication and delete and your R will be on the open bracket and your X squared you can look for X squared to calculate the coefficient of determination Okay, so I know that I didn't give you time to do any of the exercises. We've got 20 minutes left. Let me ask you, do you have a calculator? What kind of a calculator do you have? Maybe we can do an example of the calculator. Um, I'm using Sharp. You're using sharp. Sharp and HP. Sharp, 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 sharp. So there is no other calculators. I'm okay. using Casio and HP. I don't have a cage. Yeah, I don't have an HP steps at the moment. HP is the one complex calculator that I don't have. Uh, the step immediately, but I can look for them and share with with you. Um, oh, yes. The other thing I wanted to, to, to share with you as well, Adele shared the link to the schedule and where you can find the resources. So you just come to that link. And if you scroll to where it says a statistical inference, there are the notes and recordings. And you click on that, there will be the recordings and your class notes will be there. You click on the class notes. I just want to draw your attention to this, which is the regression model template that I was referring to. You need to download it. Don't 
use it on here yeah? because if you change it, you change it for everyone. Download it so that it's on your machine and you can open it from your machine. And I'm going to show you just now. Can just minimize this and we can use. Let's go and use the supervisor example that we, we know we have the answers to. I use this one. Use the table. Table, table, come, come, come. Oh, there we go. We can use this. It's fine. I'll just use the X and Y values. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Okay, so it will open a. It will open a. An Excel sheet like this, so you can save it. Um, and you just scroll to the right. Uh, I've got so many other values. Two values. One, two, three, four, five, six. Uh, the instructions are very clear here. To add a row, click on column B, row eight, and drag the rows until Y squared. Right click insert. Okay. So I can do the same. My stand on. Yeah, and I must go this way. And I must just delete because these are the things I don't want. I can delete and I must say up. Not sure if I did the right thing, but it seems as if I did the right thing. Nope, I didn't do the right thing. Undo. Now I forgot about my own my own notes, and now it's taking me long. <laughs> when deleting the row, do the same. Clicking on column B of the row, then you want to delete. Okay, at the moment, seem as if like I am not doing what I am supposed to be doing. See? Oh, there we go. It was, I deleted the I deleted the wrong. So I need only five. One, two, three, four, five. So I still have an additional one. So I must just go there and delete. And go up. Okay. So let's capture the data as we store them on here. So we have one, three, five, five. Come on. Don't do this to me. Is the table now? Oh. Back. Okay. We have five and we have one. And then this side, we have four. We have six. We have ten. Don't worry, those who are doing 1501, you will have a chance again to do the same on Saturday when we do it. Okay, so. Okay. 
Oh, don't worry about that. That is to calculate something else. Okay, so we have our data. So we, we know that they were 15, some total, and 45. And if I go to the other side, you will see the other values. Remember we had about, if I scroll to the side, just to show you the other measures that we had. So we had sum of x squared, which they were 145, sum of x squared, 61, sum of y squared, 465. You can see that this is the same table as that. Uh, the in-betweens are those that I said you can just ignore for now. So in terms of this template, what I did was to create all the calculations. So I just show you the formula that I use to calculate each one of them. So you can see there is our B1, this is our mean, one B0, and you can see there is our, automatically it completes the regression line. And our coefficient of determination and the coefficient of correlation, there it calculates them and I just give you the formulas as I have done it. Now, I also said the coefficient of determination, you can calculate it as SR over ST, and I spoke about some square measures that you can use, and there I'm just showing you how to calculate them and how to calculate this SR and SR squared. You can just use these measures here at the bottom to calculate SR divided by ST, if we remember what the value is, it is that 0, comma, uh, 1, 0. So we can use the same measures. So let's see, equal SR divided by ST equal, no, something is wrong with my calculations. Oh, yes, because I'm not using the right values. You also need to adjust your values on there. That's why it's not calculating correctly. So we'll just adjust them here and delete the values that we don't need. And there we go. You can see that they are the same amount. So you can use this to hack as well if you want. So now let's look at how do we calculate using your calculator. I'm going to go back to, oh, let's not go back to that one. Let's use the same, the same data that we have here. So we know that this will be our A and this will be our, our B. So we're going to use the same data. I'm going to use both calculators you can follow me or you can watch come back and watch the recordings later on we're gonna finish not exactly at half past because we took some 10 minutes that we were discussing so just bear with me so i'll start with the case you want so we're going to first press the mode and then we press two for that sorry my bad mode two for that and we press two again for um the table uh and then we capture the data remember you just press the value as you see it so on this we're going to use only those values come on we only interested in those values Right. So let's capture the values as we have seen them. So I'm first going to do the X values. So it's one equals three equal. And you need to make sure that you capture them as you see them on the table. Don't mix and match. 
Now I must use my arrows. You can see there, I'm, I moved to the right. Then I'm gonna use my up arrow to navigate to the beginning where it's row one and it's equivalent to one. Then I can put the four equal, six equal, 10 equal, 12 equal, 13 equal. And you can see that it's on row number five and I press the AC button. Now my calculator is in stat mode. I press shift, stat, which is button number one. And I'm interested in number five, which is the reg. And there are my values. So let's go back to the site. We know that B0 is our A. Let's see if we get 7.12. So A is on number one and we press equal and 7,125. You see, I use the calculator, I use the Excel, I use manual calculation, I still get the same. Now let's get B0, uh, uh, sorry, B1. B1, B1 is on B, so I press AC, shift, stat, rank is five, and we're looking for number two, which is B. You press two and you press equal, 0, 0.625. And that is your regression. Uh, remember the R was 0, 0.3227. So let's go find R, shift, that, reg. R is on button number three. And we press that 0, 0.227. And in order to find the coefficient of determination, we press the x squared. And I just press x squared equal 0, 0.10. And let's calculate the mean. Remember, say shift that. And it's under var. It's not under reg. It will be under the var. So we press 4. And they are your mean, mean x, mean y. So I'm looking for the mean x. Uh, mean x is on button number two. And they is equal to three. And you can also go this way as well. Four. And we're looking for five. Mean y. And mean y is nine. Easy. Okay. We done with that one. Let's look at the cash, the sharp calculator. Now, I don't have the financial calculator, so I'm going to show you using this calculator. Now, the challenge I have with this calculator is it's so big and I cannot minimize it or make it small or make the screen small. Uh, so it will hide some of the numbers, but if I put it there, so I press the mode button and I press one for step. So this is easy because everything is written except there. So this one, it's written line. So it, it's not written reg, it's written line. So we need the line. So we press one again and our calculator is step one. Now our calculator is ready to capture. Remember we use STO and M plus. On the financial calculator, you use, on the financial calculator, you use the X and Y and E and T. So like X and Y like that and E and T. So let's go one, STO, four, and then M plus. Then we continue three STO six and then M plus five STO ten and then M plus five STO twelve and then M plus and one STO and thirteen and M plus, and I start all my data. There are five of them. Then you press on and off button. 
Now I'm ready to calculate any of the values. Remember the values that we're looking for are these values here. I didn't show you all on your sum square measures. I didn't show you all these values. On this calculator, the values are just in front there. You can see you press the alpha button to get any of them. So we're not going to test them because we ran out of time. So let's find our A and our B. So there are A and B here. They are written in small letters, not those big letters. We use this ones here. A and B. So let's go. A is B0. So we press alpha and you press the open bracket and you press equal and 71,25. To find B, you can, you can also just move from there. Alpha, close bracket, equal 0, 0,625. To find R, alpha, divide, equal 0, 0,2272. If I need the R squared, which is coefficient of determination, I just press the X squared button and equal, and that will give me my coefficient of determination. The mean is that mean of X, mean of Y, and other standard deviation and the sum of X and all that. So you can use your calculator to calculate that. How do I get the table that I just showed you previously? So let's copy these two values. I'm going to copy them onto a new sheet. I'm going to copy them here onto a new sheet. You need to make sure that your, your um, Excel has the data analysis tab. If it doesn't have the data analysis tab, you go to File, Options, you can always rewind this and watch and do step by step. Uh, and you go to Edits. And you go to, uh, if it doesn't appear here as Analysis Tool Pack, you just go and look for Excel Edits and press Go, and it should uh, pick up this menu button. And then you just tick Analysis Tool Pack. I always also include the VBA one, which is the programming one. And you tick them, you make sure that both of them are ticked. Uh, let me show you if I include the euro currency too, it will also appear on here. Sometimes it doesn't appear automatically. Then you need to close your machine and come back in. Uh, as you can see, it didn't put that solver here, so it's fine. But what I'm interested in is that so uh, I'm interested in the data analysis panel so you just click on the data analysis it will come up there and we're interested in the regression and there is our regression and you click OK and it's going to ask you what is the value of your X and what is the values of your Y that you want to input and I'm gonna click inside the the button where it's flicking and then I'm going to go to the Y values and drag and it will put all the values in there and for Y I will also make sure that the cursor is flicking inside the box then go and highlight the value of Y and I'm going to say there are labels because I included the X and Y labels on there you don't have to worry about the confidence level and the constant of zero I want the, the the output to be on the same screen as here. Don't worry about the rest of these other things. All I need is my output. The output, I click on that and I must go inside the block because I want to say where I want to place it. It needs to start from there. Doesn't matter, it will be a big table, but I want it to be or to start there. And when I click OK, it will generate a table. As you can see, this is the same table as we started with. And there we go. So they are my data. It's the same. So my R, my R squared. Pen is right. My R. 
my R squared and my B0 and my B1. I've shown you how to navigate this, okay? And that is the end of the session for today. I had some exercises and because we only had one hour 10 minutes and this is very time consuming in terms of all the calculations and all the different things that I needed to show you. But so far we have learned how to use the regression line to predict the value of your dependent variable. Oh, we didn't use the other thing. Let's go back to the estimate because I need to also show you this. So for example, I'm going to go back to our example that we used all along. Can use this, it's fine. So if for example, if let's say, uh, let's say the test, the supervisor's test, we know what the supervisor's test was. So remember, these are the values. Let's say um, our test grade. We know this is our test and this is the supervisor's one, right? So let's assume that the test grade, uh, the value of the test grade was six. What will be, if we want to estimate, what will be the supervisor's test grade? So we can come here and say, if test grade is six, 7.125, plus 0 0.25 times 6, and we can calculate, we can calculate this. I'm just going to remove this and say, actually, I'm going to use my Casio because Casio is easier than Sharp. Okay. I'm just going to click that. So I'm going to say 7.125 plus, why do I have 0 0.25? I wrote this number wrong. This should be 0 0.625. Plus point six two five and open bracket six and close bracket equal. Now I know now that the answer here will be ten point eight seven five, right? Ten point eight seven five. So if the if um the new person scores a test grade of six Therefore, it means the supervisor's grade will be 10.875. Now, we have stored the values on our calculator. We can estimate the same value. So I'm going to cancel this. Since our data is still stored, let me just show you. I didn't clear my calculator, so my data is still there. So I'm going to press 2 to show you my data. There is still my data. So I'm going to estimate this value. So to estimate, uh, we're going to use shift that rec is five. We're going to use this number five, y hat to estimate. Now, before I estimate that value, I need to press it first. So I need to say it's six. Then I must go to shift that five five and that will look like this on the calculator and oh, come on and then when i press equal i should get 10.875 instead of calculating manually you can calculate manually by using the formula the same on this calculator as well you can do the same uh, you go alpha and oh we don't need alpha. Now, the estimate is written differently. Here is Y with a copy. So we're going to use the open bracket, but it's written in orange. So we're going to press shift, second function. And oh, before we press second function, I forget as well. 
you press six and you go second function and you press your y estimate and it will look like this and there is the answer i didn't even press equal it will give you your answer what if it's four you do the same four second function open bracket and you will get the answer of nine comma six two five what if it's 20 you do the same 20 second function open bracket and it will give you your 20. what if now we are given the value of x and we need to what if we given the value of y and we need to estimate the value of x same to estimate x there is your x copy so five Check. Uh, not i'm not estimating y i'm estimating x five second function and there is your estimate of your y or your x if my y is five that will be the value of your test grade, you will get a negative test grade. If my value is 20 of X, is 20, oh sorry, by value of Y is 20, to estimate the value of X, it will be 20.6. And you can do the same on this calculator as well. Estimating 20, second function, or shift, Step one, five and four for X and equal 20.6. You can see the, the answers are the same. And that's how you can estimate. So I just want to also bring to your attention that in your exam, these are the type of questions that you will get. You will need to tell them about the scatter plot. You will need to tell them about the the relationship you will need to calculate the regression line the same way as we have calculated and you need to be able to interpret the slope if that is the slope you will need to tell them if this line fits perfectly and so forth whether also the strength of the relationship is it a strong relationship or not so those are the type of questions that you will get other questions that you will get might be asking you to find in a simple relation, uh, regression line, determine the coefficient of determination. We know that that is your, your R squared is given by SSR over SST. And here you are given SSE and SST, and we know that SST is the same as SSR plus s s e so you just use this to calculate the value of ssr and substitute into the formula that's all what you need to do in terms of this kind of questions the other thing remember i told you you can also calculate the sum square measures so if you put this data into your calculator you don't even have to worry too much because this is your x this is your y your y value you can calculate the sum of x y on your calculator remember the sum of x y you find them they they are you go to sum which is three they are the answer the sum of x y the sum of x y squared sum of y uh, y squared if you want the y squared now here at the bottom it has your uh, variance standard uh, the variance and this is this one is that and the the one at the bottom is your variance so we have the standard deviation remember where you find your standard deviation is on button number four and it is that sx and xy sy now you will get the value there and you're going to square the answer because this is sx squared and this is you will multiply that by your sy squared that you will find on your calculator 
this value you will have to calculate because you will have to go and find your sum of x and your sum of x and the sum of xy, sum of x times y, and your n is how many there are, there are 10. So this will be 10 minus one and that will be 10. Uh, what else? So this is the same as that value. So if you have that value, you should be able to get that. Coefficient of correlation. You would have calculated the coefficient of correlation using the covariance and your standard deviations. Um, and that concludes today's session. Are there any questions? You will need to. You will need to um, exercise and also go through the the templates if you want to use the template whichever one that you feel comfortable with, but you will also need to have lots and lots and lots of practice in order for you to be able to know how to use all these things that I've just shared with you. And I am glad that by the end of the session, we have about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven people on here, it's encouraging then uh, probably we, we will have a session next week, but I am not sure if by June we will have a session because you guys, you were not attending the sessions, but that will be some engagement that we will have. Otherwise, we will have to send an email with, with motivation to say why you need these sessions not to be cancelled. Um, other than that, Thank you very much for coming. Are there any questions, comments, anything from anyone? Please make sure that you uh, complete the register. I'm going to share the register again on the chat. I'm going to also share the link, uh, but you all, if you joined, then it means you are on the WhatsApp group. Uh, the link is shared on the WhatsApp group on how you access the notes and the recordings. Other than that, thank you guys. See you next week, Tuesday, same time, same place. Yes, Rufilwe? Good evening. Yes, good evening. Um, WhatsApp group. I was asking if I can please be added to this WhatsApp group. Um, someone sent a link in the Telegram group. That's how I ended up here. Oh, okay. Uh, the WhatsApp group. Uh, how do you guys join the WhatsApp group, Gunj? Um, okay. Let me see. You send the link on the chat. Okay. I think the link should be there on the chat. Uh, I must just go to the history to see if we have it. Shared it before. It has been long. It came a long, long way. We long, long way. Okay, who's the admin the other group? Mm -mm. I don't know. Okay. okay, there is the information on the chat. I am the admin of the group. Okay. Uh, yeah, so I've sent two links there. Mm -hmm. uh, you can copy them and keep them safe if you want. The first one is where you will find the notes and this I, I created a short link for the notes and the recordings. And then the other link is the WhatsApp group to the STA 1501. And the other group, uh, the WhatsApp group is for the link to the 1502. If you're doing 1501, we have sessions every Saturday, half past eight till half past 10. Um, mm -hmm. I'm doing 1502. Only. Okay, yes. so then you will just use the 1502 and to, and next week it's our last session. How, my daughter? 
how my daughter we have covered everything needed for 1502 since we started the sessions in april we are now next week we're covering the last session that covers everything 1502 so that will be time series and forecasting that we will cover next week and that will be the last chapter of 1502 then the next sessions will start in second semester i think it might be the repeat of every session or there might not be any i don't know i don't know what the outcome will be we will have a discussion on friday with unisa um but yeah so all the recordings are are there okay 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 thank you very much